and that I found everything, at least on that pattern. And this is like, it, it might not sound very important thing, but for me it was always a big problem. The fact that, you know, I was not sure that I found everything. I was not sure that that particular pattern was, you know, the, the one that, only the one that existed. So, uh, you know, because this is, this is the cash flow too, right? You go to the client, you give them two traces. The client is absolutely expected to ask a question, which is, so if I fix those two, I am secure. And up until now, I wouldn't really say yes, because I had that cozy feeling of like, whoa, yeah, well, I think you are. Well, you'll be better than you were before, <laughs> but, you know, there's always that thing. So, uh, unfortunately, so this is where it is. You can download this today, right? If you give me your card, you know, I'll support you guys on your adventures using Alice. Alice would actually release kind of a, a, a more formal evaluation version, so you could also have a go at it. I actually hope that everybody here does the same thing. Like, why can't I just walk into one of the guys and get an evaluation version, right? Um, I, I'm very happy that finally I'm actually working with a company that actually doesn't get you to sign NDAs and actually gives the evaluation versions, or, you know, like this, and actually at least lets you try the thing, right? Even if you don't buy it, just use the open source, at least try it. Like, I have an eye. I, can't, I don't have the other evaluation version of the other guys, and I wish I had. So, okay, so now what I want to show you is the, the more advanced um, use of it. Unfortunately, a lot of it is still on the F1 world because I haven't ported it, because also a lot of it is also to do with live engagements. But I have a couple of ones that I wanted to, I can show you. So we can go back to the first one that um, I was showing you, which is that one that has the big fluffy graphic. And, and what that is, is that's a visualization of the, so of the source code. So one of the things I started getting into was this idea that actually if I visualize something, the leaves and the, 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 the leaves at the top and the leaves at the bottom are actually really good because they're actually telling you the attack surface and the exit points. So I found that I can also do a lot of very interesting analysis just by looking at the particular graph. So what you have here, right, is that graph. Now, you might look at this and go, well, that's really stupid. You can't really do anything with it. But why, what if we look at it from a class point of view. So let me filter this, right? Instead of having one, I'm going to go two. So I'm now going to start filtering by class. Now this is interesting because if I show you the vertices here, right, what actually you have now is a relationship between like the, the so one is org OASP lessons, two is Java, three, no, two is org Apache, right? Seven is JVX, etc. So this is interesting because now you can start to analyze this per namespace. So we're actually now looking at architectural, how the application works. And what's cool about this is that if you have a data layer here and you have a business layer here and you have a GUI layer here and you plot this and you see a path from the GUI to the data, you go, whoa, that shouldn't be there, right? Because, you know, that's a shortcut. So this is one of the things I can do here. Uh, one of the other things that I do is I script like crazy, right? Every, and this is, this is now allows, it's going to allow me to show you, right, for me, hopefully this thing compiles, right, my favorite feature of, of F1 or O2, you know. So, like, one of the things that I, I never forget, like, I, I was like with Alan's engineering, right, and like the guy said, okay, Dennis, I, I get the point, right, you need to be, you know, um, what's it called, uh, you need to have access to these things. Right, so what do you want to be exposed, right? And you guys probably know that my answer was everything, right? I want every single thing that exists in all of the technology to be exposed to me. If you can do it in a GUI, I should be able to script it. So that's what I did. So what I did was I, I come up with this concept of why don't I develop O2 in O2, right? Why don't I able actually to, while I'm doing it, you know, instead of going to Visual Studio, right, whatever, I just do it there. So I added this really powerful scripting environment where you can do like this. So here we go. I added the method. I compile it, right, no errors. It gets added to here, and I can invoke it, right? And I can go uh, string, so I can basically now uh, return, uh, what's it called? Uh, return something. So now you can see that. It already executed. And again, why do I have to click there, go there, and execute it if I'm debugging this? So I just automate the thing. Yes, it's a little bit, you know, 
you, you, you could do it, but it saves you like, you know, 10, you know, 10 seconds every time. So again, I can add a string here, and I can basically um, go AAA. So now you can see that my parameter now is there, so I can go AAA there. So now I can put something here, execute it, and it goes already. And But again, I have total access to the internal object model. So look, here's my debug view. So I can come here and I can go debug message, uh, debug AAA. Now I run this, and you can see it already shows there, right? And again, I have access to the entire object model. So wh when I'm coding this, like load serialized F1 object, like every single thing that's available on the GUI, it's exposed here. So you can script the whole thing, and it becomes really powerful. So you know, I was in Black Hat. Bruce goes to me and says, OK, let's, let's figure out a way to do, um, you know, high, so what's it called? Uh, to do um, Java, um, you know, the Java J2E uh, scans. So uh, uh, let me just find it. Had it here. Uh, uh, sorry. Okay, here we go. So I wrote, right, and this is, this is basically the, the way a lot of engagements works. I wrote this little script here that what it does is basically grabs the, the file, Basically, it's going to grab the, uh, uh, you know, grabs this file here, parses it, adds those, has custom rules, reruns the scan, and gives the results. So this is also great because this allows you to perpetuate your knowledge. Once you crack something, you can just document it. And now, almost like you just created an engine that supports that, and it's really powerful. So I use this all the time. So I went a long time ago, I realized that I was always going to script on engagements. There is no way around it. So the only difference is before I would script on top of code and regexes and whatever library I had. Now I script on top of object models, regexes, scannings, and the ability to even do more scannings. And this becomes really more powerful when you do, you know, when you start manipulating the CIR, when you create converters for the CIR into other things. So just to, as a final example, I want to show you this, right? So I'm not sure if you guys heard about the Spring MVC research that we did, right? While I was doing, you know, while we publish. Else, and basically, this is one of the things I developed. So what I did when I was um, developing the, the, the Spring Framework stuff was that I needed to visualize. I don't know, I don't know how much you guys are comfortable with the, um, you know, the, Spring, the, free, the, the Spring Framework and how it works, but basically the, it's a f sort of a typical problem that you have, right, a bunch of XML files who mapping to a bunch of classes over there who are supposed to be uh, implemented a particular type of class. And then that will give you the name of the variable or the class that will be received the data that comes from the outside world. And that might actually be used in ways that the developers don't expect. Now, that's the one that like, I give a top price for the guy who can find that generically. Right? You can't. Right? So what I did here was I wrote, first of all, a Beam visualizer. It's like, you know, the Java guys love to create these crazy XML files everywhere. I was like, no, no, I like nice lists, right? Especially because you can spread it across everywhere. So I wrote a bean visualizer, first thing, so I can get everything, so I can map the outside world. Then I grab all the spring classes, because remember, I have an object model. So I, my object model tells me who implements. So it's very easy to transverse that, to find out all the guys that actually implement the Spring MVC. So from here, I need to go into each one of those that actually implement the formed MVC, uh, form backing object, whatever. I need to go to this constructor and see if they set the